Now a thing was secretly brought to me in thoughts from a vision of the night when deep sleep falleth on a man. A shudder of dread came upon me, and in stunned silence did I behold the eagle's wings lifted on the four winds of heaven. And a word was accorded it, Thy way is in the sea, and thy path is in the great waters, and thy footsteps are not known to thee. The waters saw and were afraid, yea, even the deep trembled, for it was made to stand as a man, and given a truth to feast upon. Lifting its standards high, it drew every man as a beacon in the storm. Thou hast heartily increased the nation, and not increased the joy. They joy before thee solely according to the joy of the harvest, as men rejoice when they plunder and divide up the spoil. They have not known or understood, for thou hast shut their eyes that they cannot see, and their hearts that they may not apprehend. They have left off to be wise and will not frame their doings to turn unto God. For the spirit of whoredoms doth dance furiously in the midst of them. They have not known the Lord, neither have they sought his way of peace. Fornication, great of flesh, have they committed with all who would, increasing their harlotry and lewdness to provoke him in his great anger. Thou hast played the whore because thou wast insatiable. Yea, thou played the harlot with them, and could not be satisfied. Have ye not known? Have ye not heard? Hath it not been told you from the beginning? Have ye not understood from the foundations of the earth? The axe shall boast itself against him that heweth therewith. Therefore will he stretch out his hand over them and corrupt the land, that thy yield will not nourish. Commotion and anguish will grip thy cities, as thine abundance flees from thee, as the mist in a mighty wind. And their power will he dash with a shake of a rock, and a dagger left in their midst. Then will they be delivered up unto them that hate them, and those who were ashamed of their ways will demand satisfaction. Calling a ravenous bird from a distant land, the man that will execute my counsel from a far country, yea, I have spoken it. I will also bring it to pass. I have purposed it. I will also do it. Amen. Hear now this word, you people, of the principalities and powers. Your studies of art, your pleasures of taste, your pursuit of gain, your toil of ambition, your splendid impertinence and cruel mockeries, those bastard gang-stalking soul murderers of the present time, all of this they stifle in your heart all feeling and annihilate in your mind all thought that you are an accountable steward, a moral agent, a deathless being, and that soon, yes, in one moment, your soul may be in eternity standing, agitated, trembling, speechless before Almighty God, desperately fearing an inexorable doom. Let me, in His name and power, at the last, plead with you for your life. Reflect, reflect for a moment what your present careless, unbelieving and impenitent state really is. It is nothing less than to challenge the vengeance of the Most High God, to defy His power, to disdain His clemency, to refuse His compassion, to reject His pardon, to insult his majesty and to expose yourself to the fierceness of his eternal wrath. Upon whom do you think 
the righteous judgment of God must pronounce and ex execute its withering sentence of an unchangeable destiny and an unending oblivion. Where then can you flee to hide from the dark storm that gathers over you? From the thick clouds and treasured up lightning. From the ready bolt and desolating winds that wait only for the signal of God's uplifted hand to rush forth upon you in all their unchecked, unmitigated fury. Where can you flee? You have made a covenant with death and are at an agreement with hell. You are fascinated with the world and are enamored with yourself and are satisfied to have no other portion. You rejected the consolation, refused the sheltering pavilion of his righteousness, and despised the offers of his grace. Where then, when the tempest leaps forth in all its maddening fury, where then will you flee? Yet how calmly you tread upon the very brink of ruin, how sportively and handsomely you sail along the very edge of the vortex. How content and happy to curse your way to the bar of a holy and just God. Through a world of disease, casualty and death. Without one anxious thought to obtain your deliverance. Or one earnest struggle to escape your doom. Behold now, the nation stumbles and begins to devour itself from within. Her pleas for favor will bring neither relief nor redemption. And in her reach for rescue will the hammer fall. Amen. Amen. Even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Amen. Goodbye, my friends. <laughs>